okay. How we get here? Good morning, Cedar Rapids. Hey, salutations. Uh, um, okay. Brothers, let us all unite. You would rather have us keep the internet than have peace in the world. Like, no, I gotta have my, I gotta have my internet. <laughs> Live in front of an internet audience, it is I, the savior. No, no, not really. I'm Clifford today. It's the I'm Clifford today show. Yay. I should have like uh, canned sound effects for for this show, you know. Or you know what I need? I need um, apparently what's hip these days is to have like a soundboard. With, with buttons, you know, so to have like certain sound effects to play. Actually, no, I'm not really a big fan of that. I don't like that. But, uh, hey, Solid Sloth is here in the chat. I still don't understand what those emoticons or emojis mean. Uh, but, uh, and Agent Serenity, welcome. Man, I don't understand most of these emojis. I'm, <laughs> I should be better at like understanding Twitch stuff, but I don't. But anyways, I'm glad that you're here. Glad that everyone's here. And it seems that we're having problems with the uh, frames dropping. So video might not be the best quality today. So I apologize. But all I know is the dino means hype. Okay. <laughs> I can get down with that. I thought they were. I thought it was a lizard, uh, honestly. But anyways. Uh, intro music by John Bartman, johnbartman.com. Our album of the day, we are joined by the Delta Tour EP by Mumford and Sons. It's actually a pretty good EP. It's got some, uh, a live version uh, of the, of a cover of Hurt, you know, Johnny Cash's Hurt. That is actually a Nine Inch Nail song that Johnny Cash covered. And then Mumford and Sons covered. It's like coverception. And other songs. Oh, uh, the Blood cover. They covered Blood by the Middle East with uh, the band Gang of Youths, and it's really good. Anyways, I don't really talk this long about my albums of the week, but uh, yeah, I got a lot to get to, and I'm pretty excited. Uh, and hope you guys are all doing well. Just, uh, um, I guess, some quick plugs. Just uh, don't forget that I make that I've made music. You know, so. You can look up my music, Sherwood Forest, on Spotify and all the things. Check those out. Also, um, I'm repping uh, merch today. I'm Clifford Today Merch. There's a link in the description. Well, I guess not in Twitch. But, you know, in the YouTube version of this, you can find a link in the description. And, uh, yeah, I got some housekeeping to do before we get to our big topic today. Um, I, I For a while, I really wasn't sure what I was going to talk about this week because nothing was really happening that was really interesting to me. And uh, Keith Green's albums just seemed like a, a really easy thing to do, but something that I just, I uh, honestly really wanted to do. So we'll get to that first. So last week... Oh, and also we're going to talk about audio feed as well. So big announcements coming uh, that have uh, come out with that. So uh, last week we talked about something that, you know, only some people like me care about. And that's Levi the Poet. And he, uh, he came out with a documentary and I shared my thoughts about it. And uh, oh, I guess I keep saying last week. I think I said that. I meant two weeks ago. Last episode. Talked about Levi the Poet. And it was just something, you know. I like to talk about things that I care about. So, and I care about Levi the Poet. His documentary. And I had a lot of good things to say about the documentary. But I also had some things that I was concerned about. In terms of Levi the Poet's faith. And where it was going. And honestly, I was kind of expecting to get a lot of hate about it, but no one really seems to care, <laughs> except for 
Peony Atashe. Uh, he commented on uh, the last episode. And what he seems to be referring to in this comment is... I, I, you know, it seems that just, just for context, it seems that Levi, the poet has kind of gone in more of a pretty progressive direction, really progressive. I mean, I, I follow him on social media and he seems to quote Richard Rohr all the time. And I, I do not like Richard Rohr. I don't like what he does. I don't like what he says. Uh, he's, uh, I, I would label him as a false teacher um, but, uh, Levi, the poet seems to like him. And, uh, he said some things in the documentary where he talked about, um, uh, community, you know, the LGBT community and all that. And, uh, how we need to listen to those people and, and accept them and, and, you know, listen to what they say. And, and you know, I share my thoughts on it on the episode and you can check it out. And I, I'm pretty sure I must have touched on the subject of the inerrancy of scripture, you know, because that should be our foundation of, well, yeah, yeah, that was a big point that I did say, uh, our God's word needs to be our, our foundation for what we believe and we cannot rely on our own emotions and feelings. And it just kind of seemed that that's where Levi's, uh, direction was going. And so Peony Atashe just he just commented, uh, I mean, so he commented, so I'm, you know, this is public you know, I'm not trying to hate, uh, call him out or anything, but all he said was one could argue that one could argue that view of the inerrancy of the Bible is circular and naive. And that's all he said. And I responded, it's like, Hey, could you please elaborate? You know, I'd love to have a talk about that. I, I said something along those lines. Uh, didn't get a response. So Peony Atasha, if you're still watching my channel for whatever reason, you know, you're completely welcome to it. Uh, I'd love to know what exactly about having a foundation in scripture is circular and naive. I, in my opinion, the opposite is true. How can we rely on our emotions when our emotions and our own intuitions and feelings when they can be all over the place, when the Bible literally never changes, you know, I don't really find that circular at all. So, but thanks for, uh, thanks for your input on the episode. Again, I'd love to have a conversation. Agent Serenity in the chat says, oof, Christ, Christ wasn't afraid to engage with the wicked and outcast, but the difference is when you come out, you are coming out changed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I agree with that. Um, I mean, hope uh, hopefully. I think I, I think I understand what you're saying. Hopefully, the uh, people are are coming out changed. But um, yeah. Uh, so that was one comment. Uh, that was the biggest uh, comment. Also, uh, Kaylee Paltz commented on the highlight video when I talked about Levi the poet and his album correspondence, they said, love this. Thanks. Smiley face. So thanks. Thanks Kaylee or Callie. I think it's Callie. And also we had, um, Corey, my friend Corey, who's actually saying of pine Hills. He, he saw the, the highlight for when I talked about his song ballad of Julian Baker. And he said, whoop hands raised emoji. So thanks for, uh, thanks for stopping by Corey. Again, people check out scene of Pine Hills music. Um, so, so yeah, that's, uh, that's all the big, that's all the big housekeeping stuff. It's not a whole lot to do a whole lot to, to get through, but, um, yeah. So moving on. Uh, first, uh, Agent Serenity in the chats, for clarification, I mean, you have a real encounter with Christ, there is a, a visible change. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I just gather my thoughts on this. Yes, there, there, there is change, and we shouldn't be the same person that we were before. And, you know, that means, you know, 
Paul is big on the on the idea of dying to self, you know, and, and uh, rejecting your old self and becoming a, a new person. So why should we, we rely on the thoughts and feelings of our of our old self? You know, if we are dead to ourselves, then we should not be listening to our own intuitions. And I mean, the Bible literally says, do not lean on your own understanding. And yet, <clears throat> I'm sorry, frog in my throat. <clears throat> and yet that seems to be what a lot of progressives are doing. Um, you know, I, I'm generalizing, of course, and, you know, I want to have an open and fair conversation with, uh, with progressives, but how can, how can you justify, um, you know, relying on your own thought? I mean, yes, there is some, there is some sense of independence somewhat when it comes to being, a Christ follower, you know, uh, the Bible talks about, you know, testing every spirit, you know, and questioning stuff, you know, nothing wrong with that. Absolutely. But I think it's different when it comes to God's word. And of course we have different interpretations of what God's word means, because sometimes there are things that are difficult to understand, but at least we try, you know, and there are a lot of progressives out there that just don't seem to be trying at all. They just kind of reject they reject the authority of scripture altogether, generally, not all of them. But anyways, I'm going to put my phone on silent so you're not going to hear all my Snapchats. But yes, thanks. Thanks, Agent Serenity. Next up. So we have some big news, something that I uh, some things that I wanted to go through because audio feed has finally released its full out lineup for for the most part apparently there's some more there's some more artists that need some they need some they're, they're soon to be announced but for the most part we got everyone and i'm pretty sure we got all the the main headliners and it's really exciting i know i keep talking about audio feed as more artists are, are announced, but, uh, there, there have been more announced that are, are really exciting. So I'm going to go through all the names and I'm, I'm going to talk about the ones that, you know, that I know and am familiar with. And we'll just start off with the headliner Andy, Andy Squires. I think I talked about him before. I'm not familiar with Andy Squires personally, but, uh, you know, I'm excited to ch check it out. Becoming the Archetype. That's, um, that, that was a band that I, I listened to a little bit in my metal phase, even though, you know, I'm not done listening to metal or anything, but, uh, I had a lot of appreciation for Becoming the Archetype for their, their lyricism, very faith-based lyricism is really, really cool. I can't say that I've ever done a deep dive into their music, but they're brutal. You know, if you like Christian metal, it's it's brutal. I'd say, you know, better than For Today. And I, I used to be a huge For Today fan. Not so much anymore. But um, My Epic also, uh, they I don't know where they're at now. I haven't listened to them in a while. But very faith-based, uh, post-hardcore, post post-rock. I don't know what you call it because it's not screamo metal or anything. It's... Uh, it's just really heavy, atmospheric music, uh, melodic, you know, very beautiful uh, music. And I also appreciated how all their music was very heavy in, in faith and such. So, yeah, but I can't say that they, you know, I'm all too familiar with all their music, but I, I know of them. And so, uh, and I know they put on a good show. So I'm excited about that. And this new one, this is a, this is a new announcement, and I'm so excited about it. Freaking John Van Dusen! I have talked about John Van Dusen on this show plenty of times in uh, my music reviews and, and my humble opinion on on this show. And you know, I'm a big fan of John Van Dusen, especially since uh, Especially since listening to or, or I Am Origami Part 3. I'm pretty sure it was that one that I started listening to him. And I still have yet to listen to a lot of his older albums. But I've been a huge fan. Uh, I Am Origami Part 4, Marathon Days, was uh, a great album. I talked about that 
uh, when it came out. And, uh, yeah, I was just, I heard rumors that they were trying to get John Van Jusen on the show and I'm just really, I was really stoked about it and they, and they actually got him. So that's going to be awesome. And talked about this on already on the show, Joy Electric, uh, AKA Ronnie Martin. I, I actually grew up listening to Joy Electric. Like I remember being a kid, uh, and being familiar with Joy Electric and, uh, yeah, very talented dude. You know, uh, it's uh, electro, electro synth pop music, and um, yeah, so I'm really excited about that. His uh, Ronnie Martin's latest album. Well, I guess he's come out with a couple albums like uh, recently, just really fast. But from the womb of the morning, the dew of your youth will be yours ended up in my top 10 albums of last year. So needless to say, I'm really excited to hear some joy electric along with his new material. I think that's going to be really cool. The ongoing concept I've been a fan of for a long time. They're one of the few, I guess, like hardcore metal bands that I still listen to. Uh, they're one of their biggest albums saloon. And uh, from what I know, they're going to be performing saloon front to back at audio feed, which is really cool. If you're their their biggest song is cover girl. And it's from that album. Although I think I'm going to have to re listen to them. I think that my favorite album from the ongoing concept is uh handmade. I really liked that album. And they're coming out with a new album. Uh, I, they are coming off from a big, from a long hiatus. In fact, I thought that they were done. So that's really exciting. Big fan, very unique, original music. The thing is, is that I'm curious because I don't think that they're Christian anymore. I think they started out, in, you know, as a part of the Christian metal scene. Um, so I'm curious about that. But still, it's good music. I can at least say that. You know, World Gone Cold, I am not, they're a very new group because they're like a, they're like a super group of members of different bands. And I, I can't remember off the top of my head who they are. I think one of them is from Demon Hunter. And uh, yeah, it's just individuals from different like popular metal bands, especially Christian metal. So, uh, so that's. That's, I'm curious to find that out. I haven't really listened to their music yet. And okay, so that's all the headliners. I'm just going to shotgun through all the all the smaller ones. Well, sorry, there are no small artists, just small people. <laughs> I don't know what I mean by that. I mean like they're these are more, you know, they're the the lesser known ones, but not not in the least like lesser in quality at all especially the ones that I'm familiar with. So we got Two Minute Minor, ADJY, American Arson, Analecta, Benjamin Daniel. He is a friend, a good friend of this channel. Some of you guys may know, you know, I interviewed him on the show. He's like the one and only interview that I've had so far. I want to have more. I just don't know who yet. Nothing's really worked out. And he was also on my audio feed video. That was the first time that I met him right there. And uh, he's a great musician, great artist. I'm a big fan. Bloodlines, Boha Tribe, Brave Days, Brothered Squirrel, Cardboard Highway, Carver Commodore, Chris Bernstorff, City Sun, Convictions, Death Therapy, Destroy Nate Allen. I also he was also on my audio feed documentary. And I interviewed him. Great guy. <clears throat> Families, they're a really good folk group. They uh, they made. They made it on my audio feed video, but I didn't talk about them. There's just footage of them. Really, a uh, really cool set that I caught. So I'm excited to to uh, see them again. Former Ruins, Gaffer Project. I don't know Gaffer Project's music, but he, uh, the mem one of the members from Gaffer Project gave me a haircut and a beard. Tri no, it was just a haircut. Yeah, he gave me a haircut at the festival. So... Uh, so I'm excited to check out his actual band. Uh, Agent Serenity says, finally, some creative names besides adjective, verb, noun, worship, right? <laughs> Elevation worship, Hillsong worship, 
Yeah, I love these names. I loved uh, Brothered Squirrel. I don't know who they... Or no, I think it's Brother Red Squirrel. I'm sorry, Brother Red Squirrel. Um, I didn't see the two R's there, but I, I, I love I love the name. Let's see. Uh, Glenn Kaiser, Harry Gore, Heather Hammers. I also caught her set last year. She was really good. She's really talented. Hello, Luna. Hey, Augustine. Hostile Gospel. Insomniac Folklore. Jacob Goins. Uh, Jagal Jagalchi, Jagalchi, Jagalchi. Sorry, whoever whoever you are, if I'm butchering it. Jake Bowen. I, I'm just continuing to butcher these names. Jeremiah Dirt. I also interviewed him on the Audio Feed Festival. Really cool guy, hip hop rapper. You know, um, and I liked a lot of the things that he had to say. Joe Bauman and the Righteous Few. Joshua Cones. Junia kept on hold. Kevin Schlereth, uh, now I, I did not meet him last year at Audio Feed, but I have been, I have made connections with him and I've been talking to him um, over text and, and emails and such because he has been, he's been a part of the new leadership of Audio Feed and putting things together and uh, he's really cool and I've been, I have listened to his music actually and it's really good stuff and uh, he seems like a really cool guy and I'm excited to be where uh, be, that actually has to do with something I'm going to say in a, in a, once I'm through with this, why I've been in contact with Kevin. Going to get into that. Uh, Knots, Lalo Cura, Leper, Lightworker, Local Legends, Loon, Make Sure, Matt Beckler, Narrow Arrow. I caught their set last year and uh, I got footage of them that made it into the documentary, but did not interview them really cool like kind of shoegazy sort of band it's uh it's really good stuff and they, they sounded great live nate allen of course you know that's just another project for you know for nate allen of destroy nate allen uh no noisy do-gooders orion walsh Oyar oyarsa pete and bergy pocket vinyl raven hill i almost interviewed or, or no i think i'm pretty sure i almost interviewed them last year but didn't get a chance to either way i recognize their name can't really say much about i i, I can't remember if i listened to their music or not sorry raven hill uh rosemont rusty vining ryan kerr slow coming day spaceships i also saw their set live and i al almost interviewed them but it didn't work out really good band though steak sauce mustache teal short the jericho harlot the juniper lights the Lionhearted, the Uh Ohs, the Undertaking. This one's gonna be interesting. The Theological Spoon. I hope I got it right. Third Culture Kid, Timber of Cedar, Todd Jews and the Revelators, Vanessa E. We Love You, Weathered. I haven't listened to their music, but I am I am friends with uh one of the members of the band but i'm excited to, to check them out if i can well read wind words wyatt espelin and there's more artists to be announced and so which i'm curious because usually like a band like uh must build jacuzzi is usually like a big mainstay for for audio feed so but they said that there's a lot of artists that are waiting to be confirmed whether they can do it or not so We'll see. Also, uh, Rusty Ship as well. I'm curious if they're going to be there. Uh, and we got some guest speakers as well. I'll just uh, fly through these real quick. Andy Squires. Again, he, he's another uh, headliner. Bo Davidson. Courtney Rose. Dave Trout. Fred Huron. Intentional Community Roundtable. I'm really curious as to what that is. Joel David Weir. Josh Bo Bocanegra. Lore Roberts. Lloyd Harp, Micah Hill, Nate Allen again. Uh, that's really cool. That he's he's going to be speaking, I guess. And Sarah Billups. I can't really say much much about all the other speakers. I'm not really familiar with them, but excited to check it out. So this lineup, I, I'm really excited about. I feel like this is this is probably this is probably better than last year in terms of like artists that I really like that are going to be there even though last year was still really good. So, yeah. 
And I guess a little announcement. I've kind of hinted at this before. But um, I, I can't really clarify because we're still working it out in terms of what it's going to look like. So I'm going to keep you guys updated. But basically, I'm as, as we're talking now, I'm going to be involved in audio feed in some way, shape, or form. And that's really exciting for me. What happened was is that, you know, my audio feed documentary got some more traction and some pe actual people from audio feed uh, got a hold of it and they liked it so much that they want me to be involved in some way, shape or form um, this year. And we're still talking about it, like what it, what it looks like exactly. Uh, we're thinking maybe like some interviews on the stage, maybe, I don't know, but, and Hey, maybe, maybe, maybe it's not going to happen. We don't know, but we're, we're looking into it and we're seeing how it can fit in with the festival. Um, but I'm really excited. I did not, I did not expect this. I, I, I really enjoyed and, and loved my experience at audio feed. And like, I always thought like, Oh man, that, that would be cool to like be involved in some way. And I just never thought that it was going to happen so soon. Like they, they enjoyed the documentary so much. And so that's, that's really cool. And uh, so we'll see what it's going to look like, you know, either way I, I've made connections. And also, I mean, before they even reached out to me, I had asked to, like have a, a vending table there so that I can like sell some merch there. So at the very least, I'm going to be doing that, you know, and just hanging out with people and, and meeting people. And Hey, if you're a fan of the show and you're watching this now and you're going to be an audio feed, I'd love to talk with you. Agent Serenity in the chat says, yeah, celebration. Nevertheless. Yeah. Thanks, man. I, I I'm really stoked as to what that's going to look like. So we'll see. I'll have, like some sort of official announcement for you guys whenever we finalize whatever this is going to be, because it's a very different thing, you know, uh, like interviews live on stage, who knows either way. I I'm really, I'm excited for the potential of like talking to some of my favorite artists. Like if I could talk to John Van Dusen or Ronnie Martin, uh, that would, that would mean the world to me or, or the ongoing concept, you know, that'd be really interesting and really fun. So anyways, that's, that's all for audio feed. And, uh, I guess we have, uh, we have filled up the half hour time slot. So before we get into Keith green, we're going to go on a break. So, um, stay in your seats or, or well, you know, keep, Keep the live stream going and go to the bathroom if you have to. Or, well, I guess if you're watching on your phone, you could take your phone with you as you're... Anyways, that is TMI. I'm sorry. <laughs> We're going to get into a break, and so we'll be, we'll be right back. After these messages, we'll be right back. Yeah.
right. We're bringing it back. Bringing it back. Bringing it back. Back to the show. All right. So. Thanks for not going anywhere. <laughs> so, oh, here's here's what we're going to do. We're going to switch over to There we go. Um Yeah, that's good. So, I got a tier list. Another tier list to do. And I'm excited about this. I know that this this looks and may feel like a last minute resort in terms of something that I wanted to talk about, but I actually am really excited about this because for personal reasons, I, this was just a good excuse for me to listen to some Keith Green music. And I can't remember the last time that I actually like sat down and like listened to uh, a lot of, you know, just a bunch of Keith Green albums in a row. And it works out that there's not so many. Like, I considered doing the... I know I've talked about doing the the DC Talk Plus solo works. Um, not including Newsboys, of course. But I was like, ah, oh, that's too much. Because, like, yes, DC Talk alone is not enough albums to fill up an episode. But their solo work, that's a lot to get through. Especially Toby Max and Kevin Max's. So I thought, well, I think I could do an episode talking about Keith Green. You know, I think that's just a, a good amount of albums to to talk about. And like I said, just kind of in a place right now where, well, I, I don't think I actually did say this, but I'm just kind of at a place right now where I, you know what? I'm going to take off these, <laughs> my emails. Not that it has any like, information or anything but just kind of had a place in my life where I needed some Keith Green you know uh you know last few weeks haven't been amazing for me and so Keith Green's always been that one go-to when it comes to me being in spiritual distress hard times in life I don't know, there's just something about Keith Green that always uh, resonated with me. And so, my history with Keith Green is that, you know, of course, I'm way too young to be, like, familiar with, you know, to have lived during the time of his music. But my parents weren't. And they would off they would play Keith Green music often growing up. You know, they play it in the car. And so I'd have to listen to it and more than most other music that my parents played, for some reason, I just really connected with, with Keith Green, you know, my parents, you know, my mom especially would play like a lot of music that I just was not into probably having to do with the fact that it was my mom's music, but, uh, Keith Green just really stuck out to me somehow and I just continued listening to him even as I, I grew up. And I have not grown out of Keith Green just yet. And so, and uh, over over the years, I've learned more about his life and learned to really appreciate him. I, I read his book. Uh, well, not his book, but the book that his wife wrote about his life. And for those of you who are not familiar with Keith Green, Keith Green lived a very full life for having died at a very early age. In fact, I am the same age as he was when he died. He died tragically in a, in a plane crash. And it wasn't even like a commercial airplane flight. It was, uh, they started a, a ministry. He started his own ministry called last days ministries. And they had some new, they had some grounds. They had this whole area that they had bought and, and uh, they, they all went into this little private jet plane to kind of have a look at the grounds and it, it did not go well. I don't remember the details of it, but the, I think what happened was that, that they had too many people in the plane and so it just crashed. 
And the tragic thing about it was is that it was not just him, but a couple of his kids were with him too. And so, but I know sad story, but the thing is, is that it's amazing. The incredible legacy that he left behind at such a young age. It's so crazy. And him dying at 28 makes me wonder, what am I doing with my life? <laughs> I tried, I try my hardest not to compare myself. It's just really hard, man. But when you read his biography and you listen to his music, you know that he had such a zeal and a passion that just could not have been unbridled. So, of course, he accomplished so much in his life. It makes absolute sense knowing the kind of person that he was. So, and it's very apparent in a lot of his music. Now, I want to I want to preface this tier list. You know, before before I get started, I just want to preface that when I think of Keith Green and what I appreciate about him, it's not except for a couple exceptions as we're going to get into. For me, it's not really so much about albums. I think about, I think more about songs when I think about Keith Green, because there are some albums in this list that I, I'm not, I'm actually not crazy about just as a whole album, but I can pick out songs in it that I absolutely love and like really spoke out to me in some way. Um, Agent Serenity in the chat says, yep, is it true that he would sometimes give his albums out for free at concerts? I heard some someone mention that once. Yeah, actually, um, and this was actually kind of controversial at the time. I mean, not with a lot of people, but like with other Christian artists, they kind of complained about this. Keith Green was very, he had this conviction about like taking money for doing ministry. He had a big problem with that. And so a lot of the times, he didn't do this every time, but a lot of the times he would give his music out for free. And I think he got in trouble for it, maybe with his record label. I don't know. Um, and I think there were other times where instead of giving it out for free, it was just pay what you want, which I've seen that done before. I, I remember seeing, uh, I went to Winter Jam once back in the day dark days <laughs> but i saw phil joel well it was phil joel and peter furler they were both there on the winter jam tour and uh he was giving out his new album for pay what you want which was really cool for me because i was broke at the time <laughs> so so yeah he was very he was very um what do you call it um yeah, he was very passionate about that. He had a problem with taking money for doing ministry. And I think I think for a lot of his ministry career, he he wouldn't take money for doing shows. I may be completely wrong about that, but uh, yeah, he was a crazy dude. And here's the thing is that with Keith Green is that there is a lot that you could criticize. Keith Green, he was just such a passionate person that, you know, he's not going to please everyone. And with his passion, he was very black and white. I was actually talking with my parents about this, and my dad was saying that. He was very black and white. It was like either you're either all in or you're not at all. And like you you could kind of sense that with some of his lyrics. And it's just like – but my mom, who, you know, she, she was raised uh, Lutheran and wasn't saved until um, I think she was like in her college years. And she was like, yeah, but – I kind of needed that in my life. She's like, I needed some black and white in my life for, you know, to have some conviction, you know, and that and I think that Keith Green is perfect for that. Not a perfect person at all, uh, by, by any means. I mean, he wasn't like completely flawed, but I think with his passion came a lot of flaws. And I think we need to recognize that. I, I do my very best not to idolize Keith Green. Because, you know, I, I you shouldn't do that with people. But there is a whole lot to admire. And I respect him greatly. And I, honestly, I can't wait to meet him in heaven. So, so, yeah. And like I was saying, 
some uh, with some of his albums it's more just about it's more about the songs than the actual album but we'll get into that so let's get started first with his uh debut album for him who has ears now i think that this album is great it's it's full of classics from start to finish uh, is not a dull moment on the album and, and and honestly for a debut album there is such clean production it sounds so good which i don't know maybe i don't know what he did but with his debut album it sounds great like as good as anything that was on the secular on secular radio at the time and uh yeah it's just bangers after banger you you put this love in my heart i can't believe it because of you, when I hear the praises start, so so much passion in it. I'm going to say that word a lot. I'm sorry. He'll take care of the rest as a bop. Your love broke through. I love that song. It's, it's one of my favorites. That was the one that he co-wrote with Randy Stonehill. A fun fact, he actually, the, the song originally wasn't written for either of them. They both did versions of the songs. But it was written for this uh, female African-American singer. I can't remember her name. I'm sorry. But it was originally written for her. And then I guess they decided, oh, we're going to record it ourselves too. <laughs> uh, no One Believes Me Anymore is, I think, is uh, amazing. It's like a, a, a great rock song that um, I think that a lot of people can appreciate because... I don't know. There's just something about the songwriting that's just so clever, and the and the music is great too. Like Keith Green was an amazing composer. I mean, something fun for you to do: look up Keith Green, eleven years old, because he almost became a child star. Uh, he was on. Um, it was this really old. Uh, it was this really old game show called. I think it was called What's My Line. And uh, he was a guest on the show, and he performed music that he wrote. And you're watching it, and it's just like, I'm I'm a keyboard player, and I'm watching this 11-year-old play, and he's better than me. Uh, which, you know, I'm not I'm not an amazing keyboard, pianist or anything. That's, I, you know, more of a synth, synth player. But still, like, I was learning piano at 11, and he was amazing. And he was a great singer. He wasn't saved back then, but he was a very there's it was obvious the talent that he had. So so obviously his songwriting just grew and grew. And oh speaking of uh which uh him not being saved at, at a young age, song to my parents, I only want to see you there. I I that song is so good and it's about it's a song to his parents about him just wanting to see them in heaven, you know, to see them saved. You know, and I think uh, I think there's a lot to appreciate about that song. I love the line in it where uh, it's, he's saying, uh, isn't that Jesus? Isn't that Joseph and Mary's son? But didn't he grow up right here? And that whole line. But but prophets don't grow up from little boys. It's so good. And uh, Trials Turn to Gold is awesome. And Easter Song, not originally a Keith Green song. It was actually an Anne Herring song that he uh he wrote an extra verse to it great closer i listen to it probably every easter because <laughs> it's the easter song so this album from front to back i think is perfect honestly so we're gonna put that s tier man uh i think it's great it's really strong for uh for a debut album and then next we got uh no compromise now, aside from having one of my favorite album covers of all time, look at yeah, look up the album cover for No Compromise. I can't really, I can't really blow it, blow it up right now. I I wish I could, but check it out. Um, it's really, it speaks volumes. But aside from having one of my favorite album covers of all time, if not my favorite, there's not a whole lot that I can say for this album that that I didn't for the previous one. It's still really solid through and through. Not a dull moment on the album. Although I will say that I think this one features some of Keith's most heartfelt cries from his heart. You know, there's so much passion. Again, 
there's that word. Like, like songs like Asleep in the Light, My Eyes Are Dry and I Don't Want to Fall Away From You. Like, Asleep in the Light, Well, My Eyes Are Dry and I Don't Want to Fall Away From You are so, they're so personal. And you can sell, you can tell that he's just, his heart is just bleeding. He's bleeding out his heart, like, on this, on these songs. And Asleep in the Light is just shows, you know, I love how while Keith, will do his best to make you feel convicted. Like with songs like how can they live without Jesus or sleep in the light or, or to obey is better than sacrifice. He's, he's never far from pointing out the flaws in himself. Like my eyes are dry and don't want to fall away from you. It's those songs show that he is, he's human and he has the same kind of desires as we do and the same kind of flaws. And, and I love that. But yeah, some of some of these songs have some of the spiciest takes. Like I love to obey is better than sacrifice. Uh, he, I think he got some flack for it, but like I personally, I think it's great. There's a line in to be, to obey is better than sacrifice called. And it's basically supposed to be a song from the perspective of God, which you know, that's got to be that's a uh, that's some thin ice that you're walking on. But there's a line in there that says, to obey is better than sacrifice. I want more than Sundays and Wednesday nights. Because if you can't come to me every day, then don't bother coming at all. Like, okay, I don't think I don't think that God would actually say that. But you get the point that he's trying to say. You know, it's like. I mean, it's kind of similar to what God has says, like, like he talks about being lukewarm. It's like, you're either hot or you're cold. Decide or because I want to spit you out. So I think I think it's kind of like pretty, pretty intense uh, verbiage right there. But, you, you know, you still got to remember that God is God is graceful and he's always going to w- welcome us with open arms as long as we're as long as we're repent, repentive, uh, as long as we repent, you know. But uh, I just love it. So much conviction. And yet he is not a perfect person. Uh, trying to think if there's anything else about this, this one. I mean, there's classics on here. Make my life a prayer to you. That was a song written by his wife, actually. Dear John letter. So much fun. It's a letter to the a song to the devil, basically. And it's, it's great. Um, um, underrated song I think on here is altar call. That was a song I even loved as a kid for some reason. It was just uh, it's really well written. So, yeah, I got to go S tier with this one. It's hard to pick a favorite between the, these two, honestly. Agent Serenity in the chat says, Well, in Scripture, God uses symbolism to communicate that point. The Old Testament is full of it in Christ's parables, too. You can trick people, but not God. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. It's just that, you know, it it's it's really strong uh imagery. You know, it's like if you can't come to me every day, then just don't bother coming at all. You know, don't want no part of it. And so I think I think he did get some flack for it at first because people were like, God's not like that. It was like, well, that's what humans are like, you know, so I I overall I understand what his point is and I think it's good. You know, because a faith where it's just coming on coming to church Sundays and Wednesdays and not practicing a faith outside of that, it's hardly any faith at all. So, yes, I, I agree. Uh, oh, we got these a little bit out of order somehow. Next up, we got So You Want to Go Back to Egypt. I think that that title speaks volumes. I love it. Definitely the funkiest of his albums so far. <coughs> Musically and sonically, this album is very pleasing to listen to. I think Keith was very, he was growing in his uh, musical, in his production and in his songwriting. Uh, I especially love how, how the bass sounds in this one. It, it really slaps, honestly. Um, 
It all sounds really good. Very funky guitars and such. And while the album has some of my all-time favorite Keith Green tracks, such as So You Want to Go Back to Egypt, Pledge My Head to Heaven, If You Love the Lord, Oh Lord, You're Beautiful. I mean, it's classic. Uh, hot take. And here's, if you guys were expecting every album to be S tier for me, you know, uh, you're wrong. I don't think that every album on here is perfect. So, uh, but there's a lot to appreciate from each album. And I'd say that every album has something that I really love about it. Even if it's just one song, I, I'd have to say that it, it's real. I'm really sad in saying that I don't think the songwriting on this album as a whole, it doesn't really stand out to me as much as the previous albums. Just saying, I think, uh, I think there are some songs on this album that are just kind of like, Oh, okay. You know, not as, uh, not as convicting, you know, not as interesting songwriting wise, even though like I like the production, I just kind of wish the, the songwriting was a bit more interesting. Stop These stupid reminders that I got, <laughs> um, but it's still good. It's still pretty solid. Like I said, I love, I love the first two tracks or first three tracks. Actually, I think lies is pretty good. Uh, but some of the songs are just kind of skippable sometimes for me, but that's just my hot take. Um, Agent Serenity says, if everything was S tier would be an anticlimactic stream. Sure. Yeah. And I'm sure I'm going to make some up people, some people set personally A or B tier. Yeah. I'm going to go with a, there's a lot that I love. I, I especially think so you, the first track so you want to go back to egypt is so fun also shout out to uh pledge my head to heaven shout out to bob dylan for playing harmonica on that track uh not sure if you guys are familiar it's kind of like a, a well-known secret that bob dylan was friends with keith green for a while uh you know around the time that he got saved bob dylan still might be saved but there's been speculation about that we don't know, but definitely during this time, he, you know, he recorded harmonica on pledge my head to heaven. So that's really interesting. I think, I mean, if you don't believe me, it's like in the actual credits on the album. So, yeah. So you want to go back to Egypt, a tier, sorry, but uh, that's me. iTunes. Why are you, why are you jumping? Why do you want my attention? Stop. Stop this stupid iTunes thing. Anyways, that's that. Next up, uh, songs for the shepherd, and we're only going to just a little bit more, just a little bit more downhill. Sorry to say, there is a lot to appreciate about this album. I just kind of felt myself losing interest throughout most of this album as I was re-listening to it preparing for this episode don't get me wrong the lord is my shepherd is a is a masterpiece and i think it's like one of his strongest openings it's so good i would love to hear like a, a like a metal version of this song it's so epic and it's so good and you, again keith green is such a, a great composer i would have actually loved to hear him like compose the soundtrack to a movie or something but it's so good. And uh, There is a Redeemer is a classic, classic worship song. And I love that Keith chose to basically cover Holy, Holy, Holy. And I think it's a good closer for the album. I love his rendition of it. Otherwise, while, while the theme of the lyricism is consistent, <laughs> Griffin says, so good and tasty. I doubt you... Uh, well, sorry, I called you out again. Solid sloth. So good and tasty. Mm, it's like the, the Pacha from Emperor's New Groove meme. That, mm. But I doubt he even knows what... what. I doubt he's even really listened to Keith Green. But anyways, while the lyricism of, of this album is consistent, the music kind of goes all over the place, which 
can tend to happen for Keith Green, which is fine. But this way, it wasn't really in a, a interesting way, in my opinion. I think I also just prefer Keith's biting conviction in his lyrics from his earlier albums. I think he went a little soft on this one. And, you know, it's fine. I think he was going for a more, like, worshipful kind of direction with this. But uh, I kind of wish the whole album just sounded like The Lord is My Shepherd. Um, it's really good. But uh, the rest of the album, uh, I'm sorry to say, it is it is beer. Uh, beer. <laughs> it's beer tier. <laughs> I mean, if you're a recovering alcoholic, maybe it is beer tier. But... <laughs> um, Oh, good. Uh, I'm getting text notifications and it, uh, my camera is covering it. So that's good. <laughs> so yeah, songs of the shepherd, a lot to appreciate about it, but I don't think it's amazing. Now, next up, we got the prodigal son. We're getting near the end of his, uh, discography. I do have a, a great love for this album. The, prodigal son suite alone is masterful and honestly uh it almost brought me to tears re-listening to it it's so good the the orchestration in it is like it's like a, a rock orchestra basically at some point but ba da 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 but da, 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 da. it's got such a groove, but it's also like so epic. Like again, a lot of the song just kind of it feels like a soundtrack to a movie. <coughs> and it's also, I'd say, probably his most ambitious track, probably his most ambitious musical attempt because it's a 12 minute track and it's almost like a prog rock song sort of. <laughs> And I think I think I may have come to realize that it is my favorite song from Keith Green. Probably. And I think in this album, Keith brought back his energy I loved from his first two or three albums. Uh, I can't wait to get to he heaven and keep all that junk. Uh, our, our bops, I'm going to say. Lord, I'm going to love you is also strong. Uh, and love with me and song for Josiah are, are just lovely songs to his family. Uh, I love, I love the way that I, I wish Keith had made a whole album of his, like I said, of like his more orchestral led songs, like, uh, prodigal son, sweet song for Josiah and the Lord is my shepherd. I think he's really strong in that area. It's not an amazing album because Open Your Eyes and, um, oh, what was it? I'm, I'm pulling up the, the track list. Uh, Only By Following Jesus. I think they're kind of, you know, mid in my opinion. But it's still a really good album. I mean, if I, if I were to base it on Prodigal Sun Suite alone, I would make it S tier. But as an album, I'll just, I'll have to put it A tier. So... Yeah, really, really, really strong. And now we are at his final album. Jesus commands us to go. At least his, his uh, you know, of course they came out with like compilation albums and such. And there's even an album that I'm not adding to this list, but there's an album of his pre-Christian music that got recorded. And it's very interesting to listen to, but, you know, it's just all live music, basically. Uh, so I'm not counting that, but Jesus commands us to go. I, I wanted to spend some time on this mostly because, okay, so I, I think that this album is also, it's also A tier, but hold on. Oh, I guess I can't, oops, can't put it back. No, not F tier. Okay, I guess we're putting it A tier. There's a lot that I wanted to say about this because even though I was saying earlier about the Prodigal Son Suite might be my favorite song, I think my current uh, 
favorite song from Keith Green that is just really relevant to me right now is the opener for Jesus Commands Us to Go, and that's Dust to Dust. Now, I wanted to tell just a little bit of a story. It was a few weeks ago, my church had this sort of like talent show thing that they called a coffee house where they got a bunch of people uh, together to just like perform, you know, just do whatever talent that they do. Yeah. Had some people singing, had some people dancing, had some people giving uh doing a doing poetry, had some people do some stand up comedy. And I decided to, I wanted to sing a song and I decided to cover dust to dust. Now dust to dust has always been one of those songs that I go to when times are really tough. Um, there's something about the, the passion that Keith sings in that, in that chorus that is just really moving to me. And so, but I, I decided to do my own little acoustic rendition of it. And it's funny because like the day of that performance, personal things were going on in my life and that happened to happen that day, but I still performed the song. I'm sorry if you're hearing my stomach grumbling. I apologize. I decided to still, I, I still performed that song. And with all the stuff going on in my life, you know, when I sang that song, I, I almost got choked up, honestly. And so that happened. And then you know, it's been weeks. It's been weeks since then. And when I was preparing for this episode, you know, since since that performance, things in my personal life have, they've kind of continued to go pretty downhill, you know. And so, has, and they've brought me to a pretty humbling place. And re-listening to that song, this doesn't usually happen. I don't usually get moved to tears listening to music. Like there's music that I love and can really, you know, uplift me emotionally. But it takes a lot for a song to bring me to tears. It does. Because I'm just such a stone cold hearted person. <laughs> Um, but as soon as that chorus hit, when I was listening to it in the context of everything going on in my life, um, the chorus is sometimes when I wander away and I'm lost in the dark, my faith starts to sway. I don't know what to do. So I cry out to you and I reach out in the air and I call your name and you're always there. And then you send down your light. And you tell me. Walk by faith, not by sight. Like, I was broken. Like, I was sobbing. This doesn't usually... I know it's a very, like, soccer mom thing. Like, I turn on the Christian radio and Lauren Daigle was playing. And I was just crying in my car because my life is so hard as a suburban mother. I know it seems like that, but, like, man... I've never, it's been so long since I could say that a song has just hit me that hard because like I was listening to it and I was guarded and that chorus comes on and I wanted a, a better, yeah, a better slap. It just hit me and like I was, I was broken down. Uh, it was powerful. Because there's something about the way that Keith Green sings that song that is that is just so heartfelt and it feels so real to me and it's beautiful. And it's like this song and like so many other songs, it really feels like that he's crying. There have been many instances where it feels like that he's crying the, the, the feelings of my heart. And that's a big reason why I've been able to, that I've resonated with him so much so yeah i mean I, I was getting a little emotional just talking about that so 
thank God for this song uh, and for its reminding for for reminding me that God is always there and that there are going to be times where I, I doubt and my faith is swaying. And when I don't know what to do, I can cry out to him. So anyways, with that being said, I don't think that this album is perfect. It is A tier. Jesus commands us to go. But it's still really solid. And it's a, and it's a good way to end his career, even though it wasn't intentional. I'm going to sneeze. <clears throat> oh, sorry. But there's some really other, really other good, uh, some bops on here. Uh, when there's love, uh, thank you, Jesus. A Run to the end of the highway was a song I really loved as a kid. It's so catchy. Um, and um, don't you wish the ad you had the answers? I think it's kind of underrated, and I absolutely love. Like we're going back to the orchestral led songs, but like the Keith's piano prelude and uh, going into creating me a clean heart is so good. I mean, I love that we have a whole track just dedicated to to being instrumental. And um, and I love that. And it's it's really good. And creating me a clean heart is just it's a classic. I mean, it's not it's so simple. And it's been one of it's it's been one of my favorites from Keith Green. And when I led worship, it was it was one of my favorites to 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 pick up and like how uh, lead the congregation in because it is really easy to pick up, but it speaks so much. And it's also one of those songs that is often the cry of, of my heart as well. And it's basically the lyrics of, of that psalm, creating me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. Uh, it's just, uh, it's so good. And uh, yeah, it's kind of bittersweet to know that that was, uh, that was the last song that anyone ever heard from him, you know? So Agent Serenity says, nice tier list. Thanks, man. I, like I said, I mean, I've said throughout this whole episode, I have obviously a great appreciation for Keith Green and, um, I love to talk about him as any opportunity that I can on this channel. And so I thought it'd be nice to have a whole episode dedicated to, uh, talking about his music. And, uh, don't you think that this is going to be the last time that I'm going to talk about Keith Green's music? Any chance that I get, I talk about his music. Um, but, uh, yeah, he just, he just had a passion in his music that you don't really find in Christian music today often, uh, for most of his music. He had a way of, you listen to his music and it really felt like that he actually meant what he was singing. And you can't find that often in Christian music today. Everything is so canned and and just like pre pre cooked you know it's just like oh we're just making music and we're gonna make it sound like all the other music and like it's hard to find any passion you know these days and i don't know what's up with that so anyways just to review s tier for him who has ears no compromise a tier so you want to go back to Egypt, the prodigal son, Jesus commands us to go, B tier, songs from the shepherd, for the shepherd, sorry. Not really a bad album in in this group. Like I have no C tiers or Ds or Fs, but you know, I just kept them in there for, for tension, you know, so. Anyways, I think that's all I really got to say to gush about. Keith Green, thank you for listening to my to my gushing over him. I wish that I had a fro like him. I do, but you know, apparently he was uh, Jewish. I think he was part Jewish. Um, Agent Serenity in the chat says, well, since we are approaching Easter, have any good Easter song recommendations? Anything covering the Passion Week, really? The only thing I can think of is of man. 
uh, by Cool Hand Luke and, of course, Keith Green Easter Song. Huh. That's, uh, well, that's a good question. I, uh, yeah, you stated the obvious, the uh, Keith Green Easter song. I mean, it's a classic. Um, I love his rendition of it. Cause like I said, it's an Anne Herring song that he kind of added his own thing to it. Um, When is Easter? Is that that's not this Sunday, is it? <laughs> I mean, it better not be. That's tomorrow. Because uh, maybe I can have a a full list ready for the next episode if it's not too late. Because I can't really think off the top of my head. Let's see. It's Easter Sunday. Okay, yeah, that that's that's next April. So, um. Off the top of my head, the I have to think of better ones because the ones that I'm thinking off the top of my head, I don't really even listen to anymore. There was uh, the one piece of for today music that I like. I mean, if you that's even if you like metal, but for today had an EP called Prevailer, and that was I thought it was pretty good. I don't listen to for today much anymore, but like I would go back to Prevailer. And, um, I don't listen to, I don't support Hillsong anymore, but Darlene Sheck, Jeek or Sheck, whatever, had a song called Victor's Crown that I thought was really good. Um, there's plenty of worship songs that I really like that are Easter inspired. And there's also something that I'm going to review in uh, my humble opinion in just a moment that is Easter related. So there's that. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to come back and have a more, you know, thorough and definite list of Easter related music that that I like. So um, prop maybe next episode I'll have I'll have something. Um, I'll have something more definite for you. Uh, I'll just, you know, that'll just be my homework for now. I just can't really think right now, even though I know that there's, I know that there's stuff out there. So you put me on the spot. I should be better at being on the spot. I mean, I, I have this whole, the f whole format of this show is for me to be able to have conversations with you guys. But I hope that that's okay. If um, I come back, we circle back to that question you know, true, uh, white house, uh, press, uh, style. <laughs> what is that? Uh, what are they, <laughs> what do they call that when they, uh, the speaker for the white house comes back and that, that one lady was always like, We're, we'll circle right back to that. <laughs> so we'll, we'll circle back to that in the next episode. If that's all right. Anyways, uh, because you know, I want to have a good list. And I feel like I'm not going to have the perfect list just right off the bat. So we'll see. Anyways, so time for my humble opinion. Got some good stuff to talk about. And this list is going to be, this list is going to look a little similar to last week because we got some, some of the same artists that have released some new music. First off, we got Telephone Friends. And they've released a couple singles, uh, Heartbeat Faster and BMW Dad. Now, Telephone Friends is a new kind of super group, and which uh, feature they the band includes none other than favorites that I've talked about on this show, John Van Dusen and Tyson Matzenbacher. Uh, I love both of those guys, and uh, I think it's great that they're working together. I mean, they're both from Tooth and Nail, and they're my two like favorite solo artists on on Tooth and Nail right now. And they've created a band with a bunch of other guys called Telephone Friends. And right now, it just seems like it's just a project for fun. Like uh, none of the songs seem like ultra deep or anything. Uh, especially BMW Dad. I mean, it's basically a, a comedy song. Um, 
but it's really good and it's really good music and it's just really good like fun indie rock so and um, we'll play a little clip of it but uh heartbeat faster is just really catchy and a lot of fun and uh they're they're gonna be releasing an album and i'm excited to hear it so uh yeah check out heartbeat faster well check out both singles but we're gonna play a clip from heartbeat faster by telephone friends All right, and uh, next up, we got another track from Drew Holcomb. <clears throat> it seems, <clears throat> sorry, it seems that he is prepping for, uh, prepping everyone for a new album, Drew Holcomb and the Neighbors. And I really liked Fly, his last single. This single is is okay. It's kind of like standard folk rock sorta. It's not. It doesn't really like stand out too much, but it's a lot of fun, and a lot of people might like it because it's it's very much like the this could have been a big hit in secular radio like in the 20 early 2010s when when folk was really popular but it's called find your people and it's basically about finding the people that support you and love you and uh yeah so i got nothing bad to say about it really it's just i like fly better and i think that this is this is okay uh, I'm still excited for a new album from from Drew. So, find your people by Drew Holcomb and the Neighbors. In a world full of strangers, you don't know who to trust. All you see is danger. Trying to find. Awesome, uh, and also to to continue to mirror last week's my humble opinion, we got a new track from Benjamin Daniel. Talked about him on the episode earlier. He's been on the show a couple of times. Uh, good friend. Met him at Audio Feed. And, uh, you know, he's got a new album coming out. And he's uh, come out with a new single from it. And it's called Charlie's Theron. You know, the actress. Charlie's Theron. Uh, Death of a... Uh, what is it? Death of a Diplomat. And I love the sound of this song. This could be my favorite so far from from the album it's so tight and, it, and it's a little bit more like indie rock than uh the more acoustic kind of folky sound from his uh from his previous albums but i love the production of it i love uh what he the effects that he has on his vocals and oh i need to uh shoot i need to look out his post that he made on instagram that basically explained the the meaning of the song if you just uh, give me one second. Um, so professional, I know, right? Uh, oh, yeah. So this song, he said in his uh, post on social media, this song is about the cognitive dissonance of watching loved ones cling to this world while others you love are leaving it. Death has a way of bringing the dogma out of you in moments of crisis. Contrary to popular belief, that's not always a bad thing. That said, this is one. This one is an indictment on myself as much as anyone else. Trials are painful, trauma is real, and it's easy to want to give myself a break from it all instead of continuing the race. Uh, break from it all instead of continuing the race. To search for the shade in a Hollywood party I'm not even an attendee of. It all passes away, but the parties, uh, both the parties and the pain, run with God. I think it's really great. Uh, I mentioned before that this. Uh, this album is going to be about his uh, emotions and, and dealing with the, the passing of his mother um, and everything related to that. So, but sad premise, but the song is good. <laughs> it's a good listen. So Charlie's Throne, Death of a Diplomat by Benjamin Daniel. Go check it out. Fall into the siren's truck. All right, so are you guys hearing the? You guys are hearing the music, right? For it, it's not muted, is it? Okay, cool. We're good. Sorry. <laughs> Moment of unprofessionalism. And last but not least, we got a whole album actually from my friend Kevin Schlerith. 
Also, Kevin, I, I hope I'm pronouncing your last name right. I've just never heard it said. And we've never met in person. So, But uh, Kevin is a guy I mentioned, a uh, friend of Audio Feed uh, that I've been in contact with. And, and he makes music as well. And he recently released a, a new album called uh, Lenten Songs. And uh, this actually is related to to East the Easter time, so Age and Serenity. You can you can check this out. I would recommend it. Uh, Kevin, uh, his style is very much uh, reminiscent of uh, acoustic emo folk folk kind of sound. If you're a fan of like uh, uh, Dashboard Confessional, I got some Dashboard Confessional vibes from it. And um, front door porch, or is it front door porch or front front step? Uh, I forget. Um, front porch step. <laughs> I was close. Uh, if you like either of those kind, of, either of those kind of sounds, it's it's really good. It's not just straightforward like emo acoustic whatever. There, when it there's a lot of really good instrument instrumentation and a lot of really good moments. And it's also just a really, uh, a deep, deep album, uh, some really deep music. Uh, I'll, I'll read his social media post, uh, explaining the, the story behind the album. Uh, Kevin said, uh, Lenten songs began with a phrase from that time, from the time that the friends of Jesus had been made aware of his imminent death. I stumbled across these words in February of 2021, just a few months after my sister-in-law received a terminal cancer diagnosis. These songs are a product of time spent walking with her towards her passing last years of contemplating my own mortality and reflecting with uncomfortable empathy on what it must have been like for Jesus' friends to walk with him towards his death. In the spirit of Lent, these songs aim to gaze upon the starkness of the reality of death while allowing Jesus to have the final and authoritative word on what it really means. And so it's really great. And um, I, uh, my favorite song is, um, oh man, I had the title. I think it's uh, Who He Used to Be, Who... I'm sorry, I'm so unprofessional. We wondered who you were. That's one of my favorite songs on there. And uh, it's a pretty short album, but it's still worth the listen. Uh, Him Sing is also good. A lot of really good songs on here. So check it out. Check out my friend Kevin Schlerwith and his album Lenten Songs. For sure. Check it out. And will you die before your time? All right, so that's all for my humble opinion, and uh, that's really all I really got for today as well, really. So thanks for checking out this show. I think next week, next week we're going to shift a little bit in terms of media. Very good selection. Bravo, says Agent Serenity. Thanks. <laughs> Um, so along with my, uh, Easter music list, I thought I'd talk about a different media of entertainment. Again, I've done, I've done this before. Um, I want to talk about some recent like Christian film TV stuff. Um, I am before next episode, I'm going to watch Jesus revolution and I'm going to give my thoughts. Uh, I think Jesus revolution is relevant to this channel because music was such a big part of the Jesus revolution um, of, at, that, at that time. So I'm interested to check it out. I'm going to say I don't have high hopes for it. I know a lot of people love it. A lot of people are talking about it, but I've seen the trailers and I can't say that it's the kind of movie that I would like, but I'm ready to be proven wrong because some people that I wouldn't expect to like it have liked it. So we'll see. I'm going to watch it and I'm going to give my thoughts on it. I'll also say 
<laughs> um, I am going to also watch uh, the Wing Feather Saga. Uh, I, you've probably seen ads for it and such. It's by Angel Studios. They're the same people who've done The Chosen. But I am interested to check it out because it's based off of book series written by Andrew Peterson, who is a musician, a Christian artist that I like. So that's another, that's why I'm going to check that out because it's based off of his stuff and uh, he's a producer on it as far as I know. And also it just looks actually kind of interesting to me. I am a big fan of animation and like good animated films and I love it when animation studios do something really original with their style and wing feather saga seems pretty pretty interesting and unique in its style i'm not i'm i don't have high expectations of whether i'll because you know is the story going to be good are all the aspects of the show going to be good um but and i'm i'm a big fan of like fantasy i grew up i probably would have i've never read the books the wing feather saga books but i probably would have loved them as a kid so we'll see. That's why I want, I'm interested in it because it's it's partly created by Andrew Peterson. And so whenever a, a, a good musician, a favorite musician of, of mine uh, does something out of the ordinary, I'd like to talk about it. You know, like uh, when a, a favorite artist writes a book or something or makes a movie or makes a documentary. I want to talk about that. Agent Serenity says... Another thing to check is The Boy, the Mole, the Fox, and the Horse. I haven't seen it, but I heard the author of the book turned animation was Christian. I've never heard of that. I'll have to check that out. I don't know if we'll talk about it on the show because there's only so much room to talk about stuff. Um, and plus, you know, big reason why I picked Jesus Revolution and the Wing Feather Saga is because there's some connection to Christian music, which I know I, I've I've talked about Christian movies, whether they had to do with Christian music or not, uh, because I like to talk about Christian entertainment as a whole, although I like to keep it focused on Christian music as much as possible. But I don't know. I'm not saying I'm not saying I'm not. Uh, I've never even heard of it, so I'll check it out for sure. Um, so that's like a show, the boy, the mole, the fox. It sounds like a me without you song, <laughs> the fox, the crow, and the cookie. If you've ever heard that one, um, but yeah, uh, maybe maybe I'll check it out. It was an animated short. Oh, okay, so that should be easy to check out. So maybe I will. Cool. All right. Well, I think that's gonna do it for today that that is all folks thank you so much for checking out today's episode of the i'm clifford today show uh be sure to like and subscribe if you if you liked what you witnessed today you know and be sure to stick around for the next episode working really hard on uh my John James documentary and some other projects. Uh, yeah. Leave a rating and review on Apple podcasts. And you can also leave a rating on Spotify as well. It really helps us out and be, be sure to follow us as well. If you're listening on the podcast, Podwood forecast, uh, got some new stuff coming out. We have a lost episode that's coming out pretty soon. And then we're going to be working on our, our revisiting our top favorite films of all time lists going to record that soon uh so yeah also buy merch link in the description and uh yeah oh yeah uh next stronghold stream should be on tuesday unless something changes so go follow me on twitch if you haven't already and uh watch my gaming streams all right until then i'll see you guys uh, uh later you guys have a good weekend love you god bless bye